I leaving? Should we check the uh, bottom of the hill? I was looking last night at a couple of different things. Uh, so, um, the end goal with my goats is to um, keep bringing in uh, small, uh, fresh goats so that uh, I keep my herd kind of diverse in their uh, uh, genetic makeup and also keep them on the small side. So I've got a little bit of a land here and we do grow a pretty good amount of stuff down here. Um, if uh, I keep a little bit of water on it up there anyway. And uh, come summertime it actually doesn't do too bad in here either because if we do get a rain all of this greens up real fast but it's it's pretty rocky as you can see and when I was initially planning on the 2038 the idea was is maybe uh, the ground was just uh, rocky because all of these little rocks were floating up to the surface I'm starting to believe a little more uh, possibly truthfully that this is literally rocks and there's a small amount of dirt so ooh, looks like I lost the uh, the puffball plant over there too so uh, usually when I walk down here I actually scare a deer out so we'll see if there's a deer back here it usually scares this thing quite a bit she's uncomfortable with deer so let's see if we got some but uh, continuing on, I was thinking maybe I've got a lot of dirt down here and I just have too many rocks and I need to get rid of the rocks. But actually I'm thinking that the, the deal actually is I just don't have any dirt. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the case. So I'm probably going to just need to bring in dirt if I want to see any kind of pasture down here. And I'm okay with that. So, I think, you know, two or three square acres of dirt would probably do me. <laughs> I don't think my neighbors would like that very much. Uh, no, I'm, I'm probably going to bring in some dirt though. Uh, I'd like to see my backyard grow a little bit more stuff for the goats and that would mean that uh, we could probably get uh, the herd going. And I was thinking, well, I don't really have that good of luck with dogs watching the goats. What, what else could watch goats? Well, uh, a couple of the farms around here sell llamas. And I was thinking about that. And that there might be a case for that. But uh, I also noticed online that there is a... Uh, a drone that flies by itself and I'm a little fuzzy on the details as I'm still researching it uh, for its intended purpose of you know keeping an eye on the person that's controlling the drone doing things like dronies which is that uh, movie shot where the camera is pretty close to the subject and then flies away, away really really quickly to reveal like this huge landscape uh, that's called a drony. It can do that automatically, for example, or it can orbit the subject. And what you can actually do with a drone, since it has a, a fairly sophisticated AI, is, uh, and here's the back fence, by the way, it's extremely tall. Uh, you're at my eye level, which is about six foot. Uh, and that's a little lower than that. And it's still got about another four foot. It's a very tall fence. I don't know what's over there. It, um, it isn't scared of people. It doesn't appear to be cow sized and, uh, it likes to stay in the forest. So I don't ask questions. I don't want to know, but, uh, that's the corner of my fence there. And this fence just keeps going. Whereas that's my, the next ranch over right here. Anyway, so the, the drone, you can tell it to watch something and follow it. And I was thinking that is really cool. Uh, perhaps 
with the right network, I could uh, bridge my Wi-Fi all the way down the hill here with, say, like a Loco Station M2 or, you know, heaven forbid, a Gigabeam uh, through Ubiquity, you know, maybe do two or three of them and just kind of coat the back valley in Wi-Fi and have one of those things uh, locate my herd matron, which is Meep. Everybody follows Meep. You know, even if I had to tape a beacon to her, <laughs> which would be very funny. <clears throat> and send the drone out and just have it every so often keep an eye on my goats. I thought that would be really, really cool. They actually kind of facilitate something like that. Uh, they have a dock that I didn't get to read too much on but it looks like it can autonomously take off from this dock which I assume means the dock is uh, able to control the drone and charge its battery but you know it could fill the battery up have the drone go out maybe map the edges of my ranch and the range on it's like six kilometers so that's probably way more than necessary especially if i centrally locate it uh, and then locate the subject which i actually don't think it can do i think you actually have to either have a beacon on the subject or manually target it but who knows and uh yeah that'd be kind of fun because then it's like yeah you know i have shepherds but the thing that shepherds my livestock is this little bitty drone thing that has a really crazy camera in it and it can autonomously do things. <laughs> what do you think, Lieben? They're taking your job. This is my flat rock back here. This thing is awesome. It's like 10 foot across. I don't know how deep because it just kind of recedes into the hillside right there. But the end of it's over there. And then the end of it's over here. That's, that's probably more than 10 foot. But it's kind of indicative of what I got going on back here. The hill slides away this direction, as you can tell. Actually, there's a really cool spot up here where you can watch the sunset. Come on, Lieben. What are you doing? Oh my gosh, I got left. <laughs> the other dogs won't follow me around. They come back down here and they're like, oh my goodness, there's so many smells and so much wild animal poop. I'm never going back up the hill. And then I spend 25 or 30 minutes down here and I start looking for them. I can't find them. And they're up at the gate going, dude, this bird made a really crazy sound and I was ready to come home. Is it right here? Yeah, okay. Like right around in this region. Kind of pretty. My property line goes up that direction and down this one. Well, look at that, huh? Is that pretty neat? That's pretty neat. I think there's another location up here, but the trees might have covered it finally. Yeah. Just another day on the ranch. Spring break. Spring break. Well, let's walk up the stretch. It's fun to be able to take a little mini hike and never leave your property. I really need to get up in here with the John Deere, but I can already tell you that on this incline right here, I would be getting worried, <laughs> but you can kind of see one of my problems here that I was thinking about the drone for. Right there you can see something is tunneled underneath the fence and is extremely interesting to this thing. So if you look, there's not a lot of undergrowth, so I'm thinking it's, it's definitely a path. Uh, we have possums, raccoons, ring-tailed cats, which is a raccoon-like thing, but its its body's a little bit more like a 
like a cat. They're actually, uh, they were domesticated originally uh, in a similar fashion to the way that cats were, i.e. they domesticated themselves by coming into contact with humans and providing a service very similar to the way that cats did. In fact, doing the same things generally. Yep. Something is coming up in here. So Lieben's going to leave her smelly scent on it, and then they're going to go find another spot, punch a hole through the fence, and use that. <laughs> Almost for sure. But other than that little area of foliage right there, this is a pretty straight shot. Uh, the upper shoulder of the ranch right here is is a little bit higher up in elevation than everything else, and then it kind of swoops down that direction. Uh, with my house being an exception, but only being an exception because uh, I believe it was cut like that to be one. And it opens right up, doesn't it? I think that old man stashed stuff up in here too. I always forget to uh, bring something down so I can get it all out. Yeah. What do you think, Lieben? <sighs> Ow. So. Yeah. Nice and open back here. But we just don't have enough dirt for anything to grow. But as soon as you cross the fence here, my neighbor's yard, I'm trying not to get that because I wouldn't want anybody pointing a camera at my house or shed. But he's got enough dirt and he doesn't have goats, so night and day. <laughs> yeah, I just need to bring in some dirt and I think we'll be okay. There's a little bit more pressure on uh, this side of the fence to um, grow because of the goats. So I think I just could probably balance that out by adding more dirt. So that uh, there was less hardships on the, the plants that we do attempt to grow. Uh, because this is how it is over here. But then you cross this fence up here again. Into the front quarter, fifth, tenth, I don't know, of my property. And you have grass, although not year-round. My fence is terrible. Isn't it, Lieben? And I don't have a clear path to get back here. I have to duck. Ooh. There we go. Oh, no, not quite. There we go. All right. And here we are. Back. Well, I'm right here. That's Junior. He's got the daintiest uh, yell. Man, those look crazy, don't they? Just this rock situation we have back here is just so wild. It's really neat looking. I almost don't want to bury stuff like this because it's just, it's really cool looking. But I'm not sure that there's going to be a lot of choice. Wow, what the heck happened here? Oh, <laughs> uh, I think I actually know what happened right here. Yep. There was a uh, period of time where we had wild hogs up here, and I, I am not a very fast runner, even with my prosthetic on. And uh, I had been cornered and chased twice by uh, some pretty big pigs out here and I said all right I've had enough and uh, the third time one of us didn't walk away and uh, surprisingly my, my wild pig problems ceased after that I think they must be very smart uh, I was trying to give everybody the benefit of the doubt there but uh, that didn't happen and my puppies had some very yummy wild pig after it uh, tried to corner me the third time. <laughs> but, yeah. Backside of our goat shed here. 
Yep. This needs to come off here. Ugh. Well, hey there, Meep. I thought you were going to follow me, but you didn't, did you? No. You did not. This thing did, though. This thing is clearly the better the better goat. Yes. Get the meat tail. <laughs> well, hey there, Junior. Did you want to come over and say hi? See, Junior's got those real good horns. Don't you, Junior? Huh. Can I, can I put the camera, like, right in your face? Oh, I can. I'm very interested in the camera. <laughs> Not in pets, but uh, camera is okay. Oh, that's fine. How are you guys doing? You guys are just hanging out up here eating. Uh... Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys do eat uh, oak leaves, don't you? So most uh, herbivorous animals cannot eat oak leaves. They have something in them known as tannins. Uh, and it's a chemical that protects the oak from a variety of things. Um, and it... Uh, According to my research, it is deadly to horses. But uh, goats actually have something in their saliva that uh, deactivates the harmful effects of tannins uh, and allows them to eat the leaves. Uh, but there's a number of other things that goats are slightly different than the rest of livestock about. Uh, for example, this tree right here is known as a purple robe locust. Uh, it has quite a bit of cyanide forming compounds in its leaves, seeds, flowers, you name it. Uh, particularly if the plant is stressed or dying, like if uh, one of those leaves, or one of those leaves, one of those branches breaks off, the leaves wilt, uh, that concentrates the um, cyan, cyanogenic compounds in it. Uh, and then the seeds are these little red things you see in the ground, which are the seeds, uh, they are concentrated cyanogenic so that uh, animals have a bad time or die and associate the seeds uh, and hurting the plant with pain, gastrointestinal distress, and death. Uh, the goats do not care about that with the leaves, and uh, even the leaves that are wilted, they don't seem to mind. Hey, you guys be nice. Uh, but they do avoid the seeds. They do not eat the seeds at all. I've seen the chickens pick them up, swallow them, and hork them up. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that has anything to do with uh, the thing that I spoke of, or if it, the seed was just too big. But uh, I'm glad that they did, because I was not sure what I was going to do at that point. Would you guys quit being so clicky? Goodness. Well, it's probably about time to end this video because, goodness, 20 minutes is a long time. I might not even be able to make it to the end of this video. But it was a, a good tour. 